There is something that has been bothering me. I see it every time I'm scrolling through the internet searching for entertainment. It's perplexing, annoying, and highly unnecessary. Everywhere I turn online, whether it's on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, or TikTok, black women are constantly having to prove that their hair is real and honestly, I'm sick of seeing it. The rise of TikTok has made this phenomenon even more apparent. Usually I can't go a couple of days without encountering a video gaining traction online because a black woman once again had to prove that her hair is real. Before we get further into this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are interested in joining the Long Hair Nation, feel free to check us out at The Waiting Room NHB. It's gonna be link down below. The Waiting Room NHB is a place where we are making incredible strides when it comes to overcoming the plateaus of growing long kinky curly hair. Without further ado, let's get into this video. TikTok is a very controversial social media platform. Its existence alone creates heated discussions within governments all around the world. In the past, TikTok has had its fair share of scandals from alleged accusations of ghost banning dark skin creators on their platform to allegedly promoting trends that has led to the deaths of minors. TikTok has had many hurdles that it has had to navigate through. But if there's one thing that TikTok is good at, it would be magnifying the issues that are already existent within our society. Honestly, I have had to take TikTok in doses or else I would be a very angry, distraught, sad individual. There's only so many social issues in a day that one can fight or withstand. One issue that has been high up on my list of hair discussions and hair topics is one that annoys me to no end. Can you guess what it is? Well, I'll just tell you anyway. You cannot scroll five minutes on TikTok without coming face to face with a video of a black woman parting her hair and showing her scalp online. Maybe she's showing black women how to use dry shampoo, or maybe she's trying to show us the freshness of her press. Unfortunately, neither options are the case. More than likely, these women are responding to comments accusing them of having fake hair. Why do y'all do that? Why do y'all ask black women if their hair is real, to prove that their hair is real when it's long? Like, are we not allowed to have long hair as well? So why is it that situations like these are so common that they're gaining traction every other week? Why is it that black women feel compelled to have to prove their hair is real? Why do people keep pushing the buttons of these content creators and their viewers in order to spark such a negative reaction in them? Because that's what's gonna happen when you ask these questions. Well. Let's take a deep dive into this conversation. Back in the 60s and 70s, all the way up to the early 2000s, most women, but not all, believed in wearing weaves that tend to be more on the natural side. The goal was to make people believe that your hair extensions were your own hair. But now, things have changed. Today, black women mostly focus on obtaining an aesthetic rather than caring if someone believes that their hair is real or not. Internet culture has enhanced this phenomenon by giving black women information and knowledge on how to obtain these hairstyles for themselves. That's how hair techniques allotted only to the rich or the famous began to trickle down to the everyday woman. Nowadays, women can look like Little Kim one day and Rihanna the next. They could look like Cardi B on Friday, Beyonce on Tuesday, Naomi Campbell on Saturday, and their favorite housewife on Sunday. Social media is a public space, so as a result of sharing this information, many other ethnicities began to learn about the secrets to kinky coily hair care. Years ago, people would often wonder how black women were able to style their hair in the various styles and what techniques were they using. Now you have little kids in the comment section of TikTok telling black women that they're doing their hair wrong. The intersection between social media and the world of kinky coily hair care online has many positives to it, 
but there are many negatives there as well. The frequent and almost daily criticism of black women's hair online has alerted the attention of non-black people to the world of kinky coily hair care. For instance, since this child's birth, Blue Ivy's hair has been a subject of public scrutiny. This is still apparent with the recent drama concerning up and coming rapper Saucy Santana. In 2012, Gabby Douglas became the Olympic all around champion, but instead of focusing on her accomplishments, criticism of her hair went viral. You see, what happened to me in the club today with my hair is the same that happened to the females in the gymnastic Olympics, whatever the. You know when we sweat our hair out, our kitchen start coming out, right? And it really disgusts me how a lot of you black females, a lot of you Spanish females was coming at them saying that their hair wasn't done. Their hair that was done, they were, it was brushed. The problem was that they sweat it out and this is what happened to our hair when it sweats out. Y'all wanna be jacking that y'all so pro-black, so pro-black. If black lives matter to y'all so much, then black looks, Afro looks should matter to y'all too. You know what I'm saying? Y'all so used to us perming our mother hair. Y'all not letting us love our real hair. And this comes with it. This is what comes with our coarse hair. And I'm not going to say it's nappy. This is strong hair. Because when I get into a fight for my hair, my don't come out. You hear me? In 2019, Meek Mill used his public platform to call out lace fronts garnering the attention of millions. This topic even made its way to daytime television shows like The Real. Memes and caricatures of black women across social media platforms gained tons of attention online as well. Black men and some white men Attempting to portray black women was a very popular trope to perform online. Next came the yanking off of black women's wigs in public and so on and so forth. But this was all done out of love, they said. We were just having fun. Can't you take a joke? It's really not that deep. These are all the things people would state when other people try to voice their opinions in objection to this type of behavior or display of this behavior online. Oh, but it was in fact really that deep. These videos, discussions, tweets, blogs would often draw international attention. Soon it became so common to use the humiliation of black women online to entertain the masses. I would just like to interject and say that by snatching a woman's wig off in public, by doing that action, that action is a form of violence that you are performing towards that individual. If it is a prank and the woman is in on it, it is still violence because it showcased a behavior and normalized a behavior that seeped itself into black cultures all around the world. I remember young women telling me that if their boyfriend or a man felt slighted in public, or if they rejected a man in public and he felt some type of way, a lot of young men took their anger or embarrassment out on the women, on the young women, by snatching their wigs off in public. I also heard stories of young men and women performing this behavior of ripping off wigs of their peers in academic settings. This act of ripping a wig off of another individual's head has always been a very, very, very demeaning thing to do to somebody else. And the fact that it has become so normalized in our society is absolutely abhorrent. Now, back to the main topic. Where were we? Ah, yes. Everyone around the world was watching and taking in this form of content. This further solidified the stereotype that all black women wear fake hair and that black women do not have much hair of their own. If any person got into a heated argument or debate with a black woman, one of the first things they will spew as an insult had to do with hair. I like white women with real hair. Yeah. 
Long natural hair is still considered uncommon when it comes to kinky coily hair. Despite the vast sea of information on social media concerning kinky coily hair care, many black women are still not seeing major growth. As a result, natural hair has become mainstream, but long kinky coily hair has not. Instead of coming up with strategies to help these women achieve their hair goals and hair dreams at least once in their life, many people online have turned to telling these women to settle, to become complacent in their hair goals and achievements. And we all know what happens when you decide to settle with anything in life. You'll always be thinking in the back of your head, what if? Thus, many women put limitations on their hair stating things like, I can't do this or I could never do that. I can't foresee that in my future. Many women decide to settle, causing long kinky coily hair to become even rarer. Shrinkage also plays a role as well. Kinky coily hair was not created to hang down low, but it expands outwards. We are so used to gauging a woman's length of hair once she gets her annual silk press, instead of by just how wide her afro is. What black people consider to be very long hair and what mainstream society considers to be very long hair are very different. Why is this? Well, that's a whole discussion for another video, but if you guys would like a video getting into the nitty gritty of this topic, please comment down below that you would like to see a topic on why black people tend to have a different perspective on length when it comes to hair than other groups of people. Most black people consider shoulder length hair to be long hair. Y'all act confused, but then I had to do this, dig through your hair just to see your scalp, and y'all claim, oh, I didn't know I had long, thick hair. That was me whispering in her ear, make sure you add long, thick hair next time. Most of the time, anything that is bra strap length in the black community, for most, but not all, is considered to be extremely long hair. So those with waist length hair are seen as a rare event, a golden ticket, even an endangered species. People are often taken aback when encountering women who have long locks in real life and even online. Who's lying? Why, why would I lie about that? If you're bald, just say that. Bald where? Stop playing with me. It's like you, I gotta make videos like this. Many women with kinky coily hair are showing off their waist length tresses making it more common for black women and girls to see that it is not as uncommon for black women to have waist length hair as we are led to believe. Due to all the factors that I have previously listed, people lead with doubt when it comes to kinky coily hair. That part. The only reason showing my hair is a problem is because I don't look like this. Y'all know good and well, there are many light-skinned girls with loose curls showing their hair all over their page and no one has an issue with it. But because my hair looks like this and I am this shade, it's an issue. Because y'all don't think tighter hair grows. So y'all see my videos as bragging because y'all think I'm the weird exception to the rule. Even though I have a whole page telling you how to do it. So the jealousy and the bitterness is not even needed. And don't get me started on the wig thing because that's gonna need to be a part two. It has become so normalized to doubt the authenticity of black women first, instead of listening to what they have to say about hair growth. While other races and ethnicities tend to believe that the individual sharing hair information has real hair until proven otherwise, which I find very interesting because many women in today's society and age wear some form of hair extensions. It's no longer just black and Jewish women. It's also become known that many brands will install hair extensions on their model's hair in order to sell their hair growth treatments, shampoos, conditioners, and many other hair products.
So since the viewers of hair content are leading with doubt and the women with long hair understand how society views kinky coily hair, some feel pressured into proving that these individuals are wrong. As a result, these moments go viral because it debunks the myth that black women cannot have long hair and exposes the biases that society has towards kinky, coily hair types. These viral moments also inspire many women with kinky, coily hair to want to grow longer hair, but it can also cause extreme jealousy in individuals who have always dreamed of having long hair, but often are told to settle. With all that being said, I still wish that black women did not have to prove that their hair is long. It's time for long natural hair to be mainstream. No woman should have to part her hair in order to prove that she doesn't have any pieces. Because at the end of the day, unless she's teaching something that is a paid service for hair education, what happens with her hair is no one's business. The reason why I am stating this is because this behavior is trickling into everyday life. You now hear stories of women trying to embarrass other women in public settings. If a woman is getting attention for her hair, her hairstyle, or her looks, and another woman feels threatened, she will try to expose her in public by stating that her hair isn't real in front of a group of people. This behavior can come from a stranger, a colleague, or a friend you thought you were close with. In fact, this has happened to me plenty of times within professional settings whether I was wearing my real hair or not. So how can we properly ask women about their hair without offending them or without accusing them of wearing pieces? You can start by complimenting the style or telling her that her hair looks beautiful. Ask her who did her hair and how her hair was styled. Also, one thing that I personally like to do is wait until everyone is gone or call the individual I wish to question out of hearing range and to the side to ask her about hair details. This usually makes the person more willing to respond to my question because they feel as though they are in a safe space when they're not being put on the spot. Be okay if she's not willing to share hair information. Not everyone wants to share their style and hair secrets with everyone and that's okay. In conclusion, just to be clear, I am not upset by the fact that women are parting their hair to showcase that their hair is real online. I'm not upset at these women. What is annoying me and what is upsetting me is that even in 2022, we still face these stereotypes and assumptions when it comes to kinky, coily hair types. You would think that by now, these type of stereotypes would have died out but no, they are still alive and well. Well, that's all I have to say about this topic. What do you think about the points I made in this video? Do you disagree or agree? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'm always happy to have open dialogue with you all. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Dynamic Touch.